All right, this is a Sony STRD 2020. This is a pretty nice receiver with uh, quite a nice spectrum analyzer. Um, this is one I picked up at a thrift store. I think it was only like $5 in Glendale Heights, Illinois. Um, I've opened every piece of electronics up just to clean it. And I am actually kind of uh, embarrassed at myself for missing this. These two capacitors right here are completely bulging. And I'm not talking just a little bit. These are significantly bulging. Um, also, it looks like there's a lot of heat in this area, kind of poor ventilation because I had to reflow the solder on the relay as well as this power Molex. And then this is like a speaker output or something because I was tapping them and they were going in and out, but I was wondering why it was actually working, but, but like you'd have to turn the volume up and down. So anyways, I got this fixed and instead of buying new capacitors, I'm just gonna reuse these Pioneer ones. These have the exact same specification as well as pinouts. Um, I'm not gonna do it tonight, but I'm gonna do it tomorrow. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show the story here as it goes, but it's just, it's remarkable that it, it plays as well as it does. So I'll be testing these when they're done to see what they are. My guess is they're significantly less, but um, these came from a Pioneer D1S that was functional. So um, I'm just gonna put these in there and I'm sure they're, they'll, they'll be just fine. And they're also the same working voltage. Um, you know, a capacitor is a capacitor for the most part, and we're, we're talking about vintage equipment here, and anything's gonna be better than what's in here. These, these are absolutely terrible. I have no idea how I would have even missed this um, during cleanup. All right, upon further investigation, I've never been in here. This is one of those receivers I must have just bought. I've used it, played around with it. I, for some reason, never came in. I removed these bulging capacitors. These are Nichicons significantly bulging and this is like from the can it's not just the, the plastic top part sometimes the top part bulges which is fine both of these were bulging I took them out and um, they're only a little bit off maybe they're they're 1500 microfarads off these are rated at 12,000 they're coming up at around um, 10,500 but still they're bad what I happened to have in my collection were a pair of Pioneer capacitors um, at 11,000 microfarads. I just put them in. They were snap-in. They were exactly the same. My philosophy is this is from the 90s, and these are 90s caps that were, were failed. So let's put some other caps in from the 90s, which are fine. Um, so, yeah, I could have gone to electronics parts place and bought new ones but I figured why not let's put those in um, I've also took a look at all these and there's a few other items I touched up it looks like this is really baked there's one final thing here um, I'm going to be taking the bottom off and I want to take a look at the bottom because I found that there's a little bit of an intermittent issue with the tuner and some of the circuits working it's like you got to turn it off and on again like it, it kind of gets frozen I'm going to take a look at the bottom, and I'm going to guess we have some some cold solder joints or some some stress from solder joints going bad. Um, again, I thought I was in this receiver at one point, and I have not. That's the STRD 2020, and it looks like a really good unit. By the way, it's working great with these caps. I'm going to do a little demo afterwards, but I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom off, and let's look at the bottom. All right, Sony made this easy to service. There was a single panel that came off the bottom. I love it when, when manufacturers do this. Why don't they all do this? Um, sure enough, I'm looking by the power supply, and I see a ton of charred circuit board, and I see a lot of spots here I look at as being suspect for broken solder joints. And as such, it would explain maybe why there's been a couple issues with this receiver. Um... Again, I turn it on, it works, but sometimes the inputs don't come on, so I turn it off, turn it back on. I also noticed the EQ did not engage one time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna re-solder all of these, reflow. Uh, I see already a couple cracked solder points, so I think I'm gonna do about 10 or 15 different spots here. When I'm done, I'm gonna power it on and we'll see what it does. Okay, I must have reflowed 15 to 20 different points in here. I did confirm there were two to three um, 
broken solder connection so they probably were working but if i would have hit the top of the unit maybe it would have made them become loose um a lot of evidence of heat here that's just high hours probably anyways i'm gonna go ahead and power it on and uh the bottom looks good everywhere else okay well the receiver's working great um what's funny is it was working at the beginning of the video even before i did anything but what originally was just a uh, video to bias turned into a resolder of the board below, um, a change out, change of two capacitors which were bulged, and these are important ones. Finally, I wanted to note down here, and it's kind of hard to see, but I found there were a whole bunch of transistors that also were actually loose. Um, the pins had gotten hot, so there were about 12 different solder points down here, and I just stuck the soldering iron in and I did it. Um, I turned it on and it just came on and activated, and everything is working perfect. Um, I'm going to burn it in a while. Also, I will note that I did bias this circuit, and it was significantly off. Um, I did follow the instructions here, and it was not an easy one to do because the connector is in a very difficult spot so i had to use um leads that have like a little hook on them because the regular ones would have been too big anyways bottom line this is a high hour unit um i did get this cheap it's, it's a really good unit um but it seems to be working great